Hello and welcome once again to the video. This one, as you can see, has me taking a look at one of my Formula One uh, die cast models, which I do occasionally. I think I've done um, one, maybe two videos already. I've got a few of these models. Um, yes, I did the 1990 McLaren, I think, uh, last time. This time, I'm doing the 1978, well, the, the 1977 stroke, 1978 Lotus 78. As driven by uh, Mario Andretti and Gunnar Nielsen in 1977 and Mario Andretti and Ronnie Peterson in 1978. This car was of course the, uh, the great ground effect car which is pretty much what they're trying to do in Formula One at the moment hence all the porpoising. Um, especially last year. But this was the first car, Formula One car, to let's just get it in focus, to employ the ground effect. Uh, the team manager, team owner, Colin Chapman, had been studying de Havilland Mosquito Bombers, World War II bomber, um, studying the wings and how they were designed uh, to create uplift. And he thought, oh, I wonder if I turn that upside down, it'll do the opposite. Push the car onto the track, creating suction. So he got together with um, uh, well, actually, they were already in his team. A couple of designers, I forget their exact titles, but Tony Rudd and Peter Wright. And they had both worked for BRM in the late 60s. And they had actually looked into, both of them had actually thought about this idea already, but hadn't, hadn't looked into it as much as Colin Chapman had. So they were already on board with the concept. And um, between them, they created the Lotus 78. Uh, in 1976 to replace the 19 the Lotus 77 that had been used in 1976 the Lotus 77 having replaced the Lotus 72 uh, which was used in 1975 and earlier a complete mess with the uh, with the, uh, the the car names there wasn't it um, but yes, the Lotus 78, um, I think Mario Andretti wanted it to start midway through the 1976 season, but they were not going to win that season. So Colin Chapman said, no, I don't want to uh, give the other teams a head start going into 1977 when we're already out of this championship. So we'll introduce the ground effect car, the Lotus 78, at the start of the 1977 season hit the teams, the other teams square in the face with ground effect. Uh, ground effect, I'm no aerodynamicist, but um, I know that you create a vacuum under the car with these skirts on the side, and the vacuum under the car makes the air move faster under the car than it's moving above the car. That creates low pressure under the car and that sucks the car onto the tarmac. He also did a few other things like the um, radiators um, were pumping out the uh, uh, hot exhaust onto the uh, top of the monocoque. monocoque. Um, and that pushed the car down as well. And there was a couple of other things that he did, I can't remember now. But the main thing was the skirts on the side. 
other little things were designed to push the car down further onto the ground as well. Uh, with these skirts, he originally uh, fitted uh, brushes, just a long brush, basically, down the side. But that wasn't uh, having the correct effect. Air was, was able to escape um, through it, unsurprisingly. So uh, that didn't work. So he then changed it to plastic skirts, but that wore out too quickly. It was too abrasive on the uh, tarmac and got damaged and, and wore down. So he settled on rubber skirts in the end of the bottom here, rubber. And that, that proved to be the perfect material. But it was so good that unfortunately it created, um, uh, I think, what is it? The, down, the downforce was too far forward in the car, making the rear of the car unstable. So he needed to have a big wing, rear wing. And because he had a big rear wing, that created a lot of drag. And to compensate, Ford created the um, a better engine, Ford Cosworth DFV V8. Faster engine to try and compensate. Problem is, it was a faster engine right on the edge of uh, reliability. So basically the 1977 championship was lost due to reliability really. Because um, Andretti won four races and Nielsen won one race. Um, Lauda only won three races and yet it was Lauda that won the championship that year. because Andretti, I think, retired from five races with engine failure. He also had six pole positions to allow as four. So the Lotus 78 was the car to have in 1977, but it was just unreliable. So in a way, it wasn't the car to have, I suppose. The Ferrari was the car to have. And then in... Um, 1978. Um, I didn't realise this. I thought the Lotus nine, uh, the Lotus 78 won the 1978 world title. But no, I found out just now, just before doing this video, that um, it was actually the Lotus 79 that won the 1978 world championship. Of course, <laughs> these numbers never tally, do they? Um, the 78 was only used in the first four or five races of the 1978 championship, and it won two races, one for Andretti, one for Nielsen. Um, but then it was already outdated. So they came up with the Lotus 79, which was um, a big leap forward again, but uh, not, not a um, radical leap forward. It was the same ground effect car, basically. And that would allow Andretti to comfortably win the World Championship in 1978. But uh, that was the Lotus 79. Don't know why I didn't know that, but I didn't. I thought it was the 78 that won in 1978. Anyway, um, apparently, I didn't know this, but Ronnie Peterson, um, as most people will know, he was killed at the start of the 1978, towards the start of the 1978 Italian Grand Prix. He was actually supposed to be racing in a Lotus 79 by then. But the, the car had become damaged during um, testing or something, or just before testing, something like that. And he had to qualify in a Lotus 78 instead. And because of that, he was only fifth on the grid. And then he got caught up in the big accident in the field. Now, Andretti was on pole in the 79. Had Peterson been in a Lotus 79, he could have well been alongside him on the grid, avoided the accident, and then he wouldn't have ended up being killed. Who knows? But... Um, Who knows? The actual total stats for the Lotus 78 were 33 races, seven wins 
That's right, only seven, and five of them coming in 1977, a year that it didn't win the championship. Um, in fact, 78 never won the championship, of course. It was the 79 that really won the championship in the last two thirds of the 1978 World Championship. But yeah, 33 races, seven wins, 11 podiums, nine pole positions, seven fastest laps. Now, of course, yeah, they would have had porpoising back then. And in the early 80s, they had porpoising as well, because they were still messing around with ground effect in the early 80s. Um, they seem to have got on top of ground effect to a large extent now in Formula One, but obviously in 2022, it was a big, big problem. Now, before I go, um, see if I can get some close up images of the car. get the focus quite right. I want to get my hands and fingers out of the way as well, if I can. And there it is, I have to Get it back into focus as I take it down here. Okay, so there you are, Lotus 78. Never won a world championship, but gave birth to the championship winning Lotus 79. Okay, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe, please do so. and or like or comment or all three and i will see you on uh, hopefully the very next video thank you very much and goodbye for now